didn't matter who was coming. Your car was gonna get fucked up if we went in front of our house. And like spring, we got baseball, play, people who play baseball. I played my whole life from five to 24. Anybody else? <laughs> Guy, 19 years in the sun, bro, plus wiffle ball. Get the fuck out of here, man. I was living my dreams. <laughs> but we wouldn't throw from like off October all the way through the winter, and then it'd be like this time of year, it'd be time to fucking air it out. And that was our move. And I would just get in front of the house, and my dad, I'd be like, yo, dad, back up. And then my dad was the dad. He'd be like, no, you fucking back up. And I would. <laughs> 60 yards, 70 yards, 100 yards. He's like, that's fine. And then we would just wing it just to see what we had. And I remember this one day, I fucking sent it. Like, it was so far over his head, he didn't even move. He just looked at me straight <laughs> as it went over like this. And it smashed through the back window of our across the street neighbor's car. <laughs> and it was like, <sighs> my dad looked at it, I looked at it, we both looked at each other, froze. <laughs> and then both ran in the house at the same time. That's I was 14, my father was 40. We didn't even work this out. We just knew, we just knew. If my dad and I were the same age, we'd be dead. That's real, yeah. We sprint in the house and we're out of breath. My mom's like, what the hell did you guys do? And my dad goes, nothing. <laughs> but I learned, I learned that running in the house was the move. So we were playing wiffle ball one day. And this kid, Danny Potts, comes around the corner, and he had like a Trans Am with the T-tops on it. He was like, that dude, I never saw the dude wear a T-shirt, just always just a wife beater. That was his move, and a mullet, because it was the 80s. Like, and he smoked weed, and he made the rides at the county fair. And my mom would be like, you're not going on those rides because Danny Potts smokes weed, and I don't, I'm not, I don't trust him with, with a wrench. I don't do it, no. You're not going. This dude comes screaming around the corner, and I'm on the other side of the street. My buddy Keith is in front of my house, and he wings a fucking wiffle ball right off this dude's windshield. This dude locked up his, like, smoke locked up his, and as soon as I heard that, and he was a fat kid, I need that jump, so I'm sprinting across the street ready to go. Keith doesn't get the memo. He's just stuck. Because I'm going to the front door. That's how you do this. I get to the front door, locked. I'm stuck. Now I can't, I got nowhere to go. My parents had thin ass trees on each side of the front door. And normally, I just would have sided it and stuck it in and tried to hide behind the tree. But it was too close to the house, so I couldn't do my body sideways. So I just went up against the wall of the house. And I still sucked in my stomach like somehow I had to make the whole thing thinner. In the 80s, we our lives were threatened like once a month. And this dude squealed his tires back and he started screaming at Keith. He's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I know where you fucking kids live. And Keith is horrified. He's believing it's gonna happen. And this guy's just screaming the ride at him. This is where the best thing I've ever heard. He finishes the ride at him. He goes, and you tell that fat fucking tree with the love handles, the same goes for him.